everyone. I'm Colleen with Awaken Catholic, and this is Awaken the Saint. Have you ever been so passionate about something that you inadvertently alienated yourself from what was actually important? Well, today's saint can certainly relate. Saint Engelbert of Cologne was a man of passionate conviction that sometimes got him in trouble. Born the son of a count in the year 1185, he grew up attending the cathedral school in Cologne. Due to a common abuse of power at the time, he was made the provost of three different churches while still just a boy, simply for being the son of a nobleman. His youthful passion eventually got the better of him when he took sides in a conflict between two archbishops. Siding with his cousin Adolf, Engelbert waged war against the other bishop on his behalf. As a result of his misguided passion, he and his cousin were both excommunicated by the Pope. It wasn't until 1208 that Engelbert humbly submitted himself to papal authority and was reinstated. He then agreed to atone for his sins by joining the Crusades against the Albigenses. After returning from the battlefield, he swore his allegiance to the future Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick II. When he was 32, he was unanimously elected the Archbishop of Cologne. Under his leadership, monastic life flourished, especially the Franciscan and Dominican communities. Because of his close relationship with Frederick II, Engelbert held powerful influence in the affairs of the empire. And when the emperor gave Germany to his son, Henry VII, he appointed Engelbert as guardian of the boy king and administrator of the empire. Now, Engelbert loved Henry as if he were his own son. When the boy turned 12, he officially crowned him king and remained close to him as tutor and guardian until his death. As administrator, he oversaw the realm and worked to maintain peace, devoted to justice and keeping the law while ensuring the well-being of the religious and poor of his community. This earned him great respect and adoration from the people. But his efforts were sometimes extreme, with a willingness to resort to military action and an uncompromising defense of the law that often turned the nobility against him. Moreover, his allegiance with the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope caused the nobles to fear his power of influence, and he was constantly under the threat of attack. Ultimately, it was his own family who betrayed him. His cousin, the Count Frederick of Eisenberg, was a secular administrator for an abbey in Essen and was accused of defrauding the nuns there. Engelbert rushed to the aid of the nuns who had been wronged, seeking to bring Frederick to justice. But on November 7th, 1225, while on his way from a judicial hearing in Soest, he was attacked by Frederick and other nobles who tore him from his horse and killed him. When his body was found, he was brought on a dung cart to King Henry, who wept bitterly over the loss of his mentor. His body had been stabbed 47 times. Engelbert's body was laid to rest in the Cathedral of Cologne, and he was later declared a martyr and a saint of the church. I think Saint Engelbert's life is a reminder to us that it doesn't matter where we started out life or what mistakes we might have made. God's mercy is always waiting for us. And if we are willing to honestly repent with humility and remain true to him, there is no telling what amazing things we can accomplish. St. Engelbert of Cologne, pray for us.